that worked, I suppose. Too much downward force again. So some folks are really interested, you know, to know more about this whale. We're going to take a good look at the um, the baleen, the um, jaws. They also wanted to see if they could see the scapula. No, we did see the scapula. Well, the, um, just more video, I guess, so that people can look for signs of crushing uh -huh. in case that this um, this animal died if it was due to blunt, blunt, trauma. blunt yep. force trauma from a ship strike versus one All of the right. other things we've discussed is whether or not this animal may have been, um, had like say low body condition as part yep. of the um, unusual mortality event. So that's just some footage right. that has been requested. Yeah, so the scapula is on this side of the carcass. One of them. Right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> that's right. I'm assuming this whale has two. Yes. <laughs> yes. One side, um, and it looks I did not notice any, any major fra pristine, fracturing, right. yep. but we can look on the other and side. And the ribs look The ribs looked okay. Look mm -hmm. Great. And then when we take the other samples, we'll do the sure. detailed look. Um, yes, okay. we've got lots of fish who are feasting on our half, whale whale fall. Okay, so oh. we've got our niskins, we've got our squeezers, we've done some push cores, we took a bone. I think at this point it'd be good to maybe, <clears throat> like we were saying, um, kind of take a nice look around along this length, see if there's anywhere we think we might be able to get bone yeah. mm -hmm. with worm with the Ocidax worms, and then we can do the same on the other side. Okay. Um, I'm going to pick up and just back away for a minute and try and shake some of this dirt off. <laughs> like like a dog shaking off the water? Yep. Is the majority of a whale's body mass at their head end? Certainly looks like that. Right? It seems like the tail end has decayed and been cleaned off. Mm -hmm. Or maybe that's a different type of... Um, Tissue? Tissues. That I yeah. think it's muscle. I think there's a lot more sort of like skeletal muscular structures up at the head than there is the tail because you have so many sort of like ribs and neck and cranium and all in one spot. I but know, I don't I know the that. weight distribution of it. We did not find this whale fall on porpoise. While we're at this end, could we, could we zoom in on the baleen a little bit while we're at this end? Thank you for your clever Oh, jokes. you're still shaking off. Okay, never mind. If, um, for those who are watching though, if, um, you might want to toggle over to the Argus view every now and then and just get an overview of the skeleton. Yeah, perspective, it's. Yes, oh, it's amazing. So from the orientation of the ribs and the jaws, this animal is lying on its back. Thank you. Sorry, yeah, go ahead, zoom in. All right, that's good there. Ooh. And you guys just want to cruise down from the, this side of it? Yeah, I think from from the end all the way down. I'll get in there closer. And uh, definitely trying to see if there's areas where we see those worms, uh, the Ocidax worms growing out of the bone, where we might think think we might be able to get a portion of the bone with worms. Right. The Ocidax words are the red ones. Okay. So the scientific crew knows that they have been accepted into the Nautilus community when the ROV crew shares their chocolate with us. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Hi, Bob. Thank you for writing in. 
Um, Bob says, whale flukes are a combination of connective tissue, collagen, and elastin, skin blubber, and blood vessels. No muscle in the flukes. However, there is an impressive array of muscle along the spine. So, sounds like a lot of their mass is towards the front. Can we zoom in um, on the bones that are to the lower left? It looks like you're probably part of the, wait, they just went out All the few. ones on the ground? Mm -hmm. Ones that are loose? Yep. They got a lot of uh, stuff growing on them. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll steal back. Thanks. Somebody was saying they thought those bones might have been vestigial limbs. Hmm. It's are those bones yep, too large? You're, you're sort of hip related area bones and whales are going to be vestigial. I think they're a little bit further back, but those could be them. Um, Mike and Jess, do you think those are too big to fit into one of the... I think they'll go somewhere. But yeah. you think they could go somewhere? So there's, that's uh, one potential. Let's Kay. keep looking. Come a little bit wide. And um, I can just add from the science chat um, that uh, the head of the ba of these baleen whales is a third of the total length and probably half of the mass. Yeah, no, those bones we were looking at were f front flippers because they're mm -hmm. in line there with the scapula. That's right. I think you. I think that's right. And then can we zoom in on the ends of these ribs? Go ahead. Just curious how uh, whether or not we think we how could friable they are. break some off. Mm -hmm. So that's another potential target there. Cool. Because eating, eating too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Or they said the ends of the, the vertebrae, which look maybe a little bit thinner. But they don't yeah. look like, do they have as many worms on them? Well, that's a good question. <coughs> we might have a better view of the vertebrae on the opposite side from here. Uh, it does seem like there's quite a lot of worms um, on the ones that are at the top of the screen. Yeah, yes, Beautiful. definitely. Oh, You're these okay. are also kind of, you can see them waving in the current. So yes. it seems like there's quite a lot of worms. You okay with the ribs there? You want to carry on down or? And we have a correction. Yeah, let's keep moving down. A correction from... Um, the science chat, only the right whale has vestigial hip bones. All other whales have no hip bones at all. Ah. Interesting. Good to know. Oh, look, wait, wait, look up there. Hold Justin on. Can yeah, we they're all um, eating away. That so the this one believes. here, oh, yes. no, uh, we might be able to break some of these off when we get to the other side. Yeah. So then if we find vestigial hip bones. But this isn't a sperm whale. <laughs> oh, right whale, they said. Oh, right whale? Only oh, right, right whale, right whale. Yeah. Well, the right whale's jaws, I think, would be more curved than this, if I okay. remember correctly. Yes, I believe so. Um, there was a suggestion from the audience that um, the bones we were looking at before are actually the radius and ulna. Yes, right. And I, and the humerus. which we also have agree with that we the do also have those yep and the humerus would have been between those and the scapula if you, if you just imagine you took our lower arm right and you flattened it uh -huh. made it very paddle like wow. we would be better swimmers as well and some of those little short bones Wait. with mushroom ends wow. might be phalanges well what about right here in front of us a lot of yes. worms there and those bones look pretty loose mm -hmm. yep they're That's heavy. Right. Oh, we got a robot arm. What am I saying? Yeah. Yes? Let's see. Wow. Those are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had a we have a request to zoom in on the bones. On the frayed part of the bones. Oh, you mean the vertebrae? On the vertebrae specifically? Okay, so can we... Um, pivot back to the right and go back to the frayed tips of yeah. the vertebrae and really oh, zoom okay. in. Okay, those please. guys there, yeah. This is awesome imagery. Mm -hmm. 
This is so cool. Um, right here? Yeah. Yeah, zoom it's in. Perfect. Um, full zoom. Oh, that's it. Okay. Try and get closer. So Crispin says that some of those little bones we were seeing had lots of ossidax, and we should definitely pick those up. But let's first finish this imagery here on these frayed ends. Thank you guys or everybody for tuning in. We've got a lot going on right now, so I will try to get to your questions. Um, we probably won't be able to get to all of them. We are looking at a whale fall right now. We don't know what kind of whale it is yet. We're still trying to narrow that down. Um, it is covered in octopus and some fish, and they are eating the leftover tissue of the whale, and the worms we are looking at are actually eating if, um, if you guys really want to get whale. tighter on that, I'm going to have to sit down and mm -hmm. climb pretty close to it here. Okay, I'm getting a thank you, so that was good visual. Thank you. So when, um, with the curiosity, I think that uh, people are, are trying to uh, explore here with these is why the tips of these vertebral projections are so worn away and broken off when the ones on the other side look kind of pristine. And the thinking is that they've been exposed probably to more um, interaction with predators as the predators were taking the meat off and other things. So they've been broken and worn away. All right, this is great. Wow, look, Here's at, the ribs. look at the cartilage. Between the vertebrae, yeah. where you're looking? Yep. <laughs> That's do you a guys nice place to rest. Do you guys want lasers <laughs> on for all these shots? or? Oh, you know, let's take the lasers off. I can now. get that for you, Mike. Yep, thanks. So, you know, you just had a big meal. It's like post-Thanksgiving, <laughs> yeah, right? You yeah. just, oh, <laughs> got to sit on the uh, sofa for a while. Oh, my God, all of them. <laughs> 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 They're all, all there. All their attention is in digestion right now. <laughs> Uncle George is taking his cigar outside. <laughs> wow, look at that. So now we're in the internal organ zones of this whale. Incredible. Wow. What a treat if you're a bottom feeding animal. Yeah. We have people all over the world. This is the highest I have ever seen this. Um, of our viewers online. So thank you guys so much for being a part of this and helping us figure this all out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look how huge those bones wow. are. I know. Incredible. Pull out a little bit, video. That's good. So does anybody have any ideas about those tubes in that one tube that's sticking out kind of behind that octopus that was in the upper part of the view, why it has persisted? My only thought is that it's some sort of like, um, <laughs> I want to say <laughs> notochord-like structure, some sort of like nervous hmm. system. You guys see the crabs? Squat all lined up. <laughs> Look at the little squat lobsters. Squat, yeah, squat lobster lined up along yeah. um, that part of the jaw. Yes, the squat lobster that is actually a crab. Right, that's right. Yes. I did say it right. It's, it's so a crab. crab. So hollow inside. But hollow inside, yeah. Really so nice so something um, squishy and nerve-like and, and gelatinous would... Um, be eaten and devoured and sure, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, disappear very quickly. Um, but I think that a, a tube-like structure would persist for slightly longer. And I don't remember what it's made out of, but I don't think it would be all that nutritious. So it wouldn't be something the bone worms would want. Um, and There's an unusual looking, uh, amongst all these worms, can we just zoom in on this more of a reddish brown? Looks like what we saw oh, yesterday those worms. in the water column. No, but nope. down, it's going out of view now. So if we just I see. tilt down. But I think we're... Um, oh. Hello. Octopus. It's somebody's... We have a stowaway, I think. It's we in amongst that worm <laughs> forest there. I think we there. do have a stowaway. <laughs> oh, I hope not. Oh, <laughs> um, oh boy. Hello. Oh, excuse us, octopus. Um, 
The wanna, octopus yeah. is photo bombing us right now. You want to zoom in there somewhere? Yes. Um, yeah. Just to the right of that frame, you see something's just a little different color. It was like reddish golden. Is it the aorta? <gasps> yeah, I, I wondered about a large blood vessel. Oh, it could be a large blood vessel. I didn't think of that. That's going to be a pretty thick muscle. So. Yeah, it's, we had a yeah. scientist, um, Crispin Little, uh, mentioned that the two. Okay, thank you for the zoom in. Can we zoom out a little bit? Can I go out? Yeah. Okay. Oh, so oh boy. Cool. Oh, that's the weird red thing. <laughs> oh, so those yeah. tubes were the aorta? I, I, um, I think they're talking hmm. about the middle thing. of the animal. Yes. Yeah, on the yeah. other the side that we were looking at earlier. The moon <laughs> Okay. We Hi. first got to get rid of our... We need to... Um, we have someone in our camera. <laughs> right now. Um, um, part down in front, please. <laughs> and I hold back on so our Argus He did wash bit. behind his ears. So... We, we're taking a lot of Good, photos thanks. of octopus, and this one is jealous. Oh, there's the other scapula. So look back to the left. You're trying to can. deal with our buddy yeah. here. <laughs> um, is she on the basket? <laughs> <laughs> you could pull the basket out. Huh? Oh, hello. Oh. Hi, honey. Oh. Um, so <laughs> this is the first time this whole cruise that we actually aren't focused on the octopus. <laughs> and here it is. They are very upset with us. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Now can we see if this was one, two. Oh, where's the, where's the third arm? This would be probably. I can't see it. Oh, are oh, you, oh, are you blowing? Oh, it's, it's a, a male. male. It's a male. You. There we see that. Hectocotylus yeah. right there. <laughs> okay, Hello. No. Um, excuse me, sir. We um, would like to continue surveying a whale. <laughs> this could be interesting. <laughs> Just mind. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you slump You could try to see if he attaches the to the T.O. probe. Well, it's continuing there to move. Go. Maybe it'll go to the um, other arm, the one we don't use very much. Right. Just go hang, hang out, out there. there. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's favorite robotic part. Uh, Mongo needs a Mongo, Mongo needs an octopus go. buddy. Oh, what an interesting view we can see back wow. on from the bubble. That's the bubble <laughs> cam, right? <laughs> yes. Oh, is that the, you sneaky. the oxygen sensor? Is yeah, well, they actually, really she's on the other side. So the o that oh. camera does make it seem like that, but she's on the left side of the basket. <laughs> you want me to zoom in on Keep that modified going. arm? Really yeah, in there, huh? yeah, while we're here, sure, we get a nice view of that hectocotylus if we can. Go ahead. It's <laughs> probably the best view we've had of it. Oh. Here we go. So this is a male octopus, and that hectocotylus <laughs> is used to transfer sperm packets from the male to inside the mammal cavity of the female <laughs> for reproduction. <laughs> This is wonderful. Okay. This guy needs some anti-aging cream. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. He's just he's remove very those wrinkles. No. <laughs> he's beautiful <laughs> just the way he is. Oh, my goodness. All right, bud. Keep going. Oh, he is heading to. Go to Mongo. They've got to have the amazing oh. ability to <laughs> fit Mongo through. needs a friend. And Mongo loves you. What can I reach through. out there? Oh, reach, 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 reach. <laughs> this is our first octopus scientist, a water quality expert. It's true, we <laughs> had <laughs> Trying to help us with that number three squeeze sampler that won't fire. Oh, I love it. Like, Let me take a stab at it. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye. All right, buddy. Great. All right. <laughs> Thank hanging. you. Just passing through. <laughs> Little internship for the octopus. As long as they didn't do this, the HD camera. That's <laughs> <laughs> so I thought he was going. <laughs> My goodness. Sea spider thing? Yeah. Thick Nagana, yep. Oh, there. Remember when we used to zoom in on sea spiders to think that they were so, so cool? cool. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Danny. <laughs> My goodness. Okay, can I get that camera back over the porch, Jess? Yeah. Thanks. The tubes? Yeah. Did you want me to check those gauges real quick? Sure, yeah, go ahead. Before we get too close. Uh, one and a half still. Oh, I should have taken gauges, one and a half. Yeah, it seems like the octopuses are concentrated on the left side. Or the, I guess the other side the of this. The upcurrent side. 
Or no, yeah, it is sort right. of the up current. Want to run a pass down this side? Yeah, yeah so, so, now so we're gonna, hold on, Dane, just a second. So, yeah, now we're going to do a visual pass along this side of the animal and come all the way around, and we're trying to get some really good overall coverage. Do um, you want the lasers on for that? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Lasers on? Uh, no, oh, no, 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 not lasers on. Okay. Yeah, let's do it without the lasers. Yeah, so, Mike and Jess, did you hear uh, Chad? Talk. Yeah, um, he wants to. It's going to be a stereo reconstruction type yeah. operation, so. Yeah. Yep. I'll just Is finish doing this round down the side, and you can let me know what the down criteria are for kind that. Of in that S that. curve. Is that different than the other guys? Or just. Uh, no, it's just the orientation. But we do have some the grenadier grenadiers. that have shown up. You yeah. see there um, above where you have the. A lot of the animals we've been seeing have a dorsal fin that's continuous along the whole upper portion of the fish, but the grenadier up to the left has more of a sail-like dorsal uh -huh. fin. And what, what's the other one we've been seeing um, with the cute little I fins? What? Cuscule. Oh, a cuscule. Okay. So the scapula looks intact. <laughs> Isn't that one the cuscule? Mm -hmm. With the cute little rounded fins? Oh, wait, you saw a cuskill here? Because uh, I've been looking, I haven't seen many of the giant cu cuskills because they don't have the bar kind of the barbels under right. underneath the chin. So I think a lot of yeah, um, yeah, I think so, yeah. Hello, Nautilus Live Nation. It's Scott Simon, the science communication fellow. Uh, I'm back. I just had a great interaction with a group of fifth and sixth graders from Harding University Partnership School in Santa Barbara, California. Uh, they were watching live as all of this was going down, so it was just great. Cool opportunity to answer their questions. I had data logger Taylor Ann along with me um, to share with the kids about what we do here on Nautilus. Seeing lots of great questions coming up here. One is... Uh, could the sonar? You know if you want any tighter zooms whales. on anything. Uh, yes, science? it did. In fact, that's how we first found it. Mike, were you talking to me? Yeah, or just if you here? want tighter zooms, let us know. Okay. Um, I think yeah. Let's just zoom in real quick. We were looking at these vertebrae. Yeah, um, go ahead, video. From the other side. Let's come in here. And maybe pan up so we can see those frayed edges. I will try to get to yep. as many of these questions as we can. Um, and as you guys can hear, there is a lot of science going on right now, a lot of communication between the pilots and our science team. Um, so keep the questions coming, and I'll get to them as best I can. And these beautiful uh -oh. red worms are the bone-eating worms, Ocidax. Um, only since 2004 have we known about these worms. A little louder, Jennifer. Oh. Uh, a lot of the work on these Ocidax worms have been done since the early 2000s. But they are actually consuming the bone and the uh, chemicals contained within the fatty reserves of the whale. Holy moly. 32 species? Mm -hmm. There's Scientists 32 worldwide species. have discovered 32 species of Ocidax. Sorry, more wide? Yeah. All right, no. I so think, yeah, um, we can go more wide now. I think. Okay, a little bit wider video. What's that tiny little guy swimming in the camera? I didn't see it. So we probably had no clue about this phenomenon until the development of manspersibles and ROVs. Oh yeah. Hey Chad, if you're in the lounge, can you uh, call up to the nav position, please? Just a head guy, heads up, guys. We have four. 1,541 visitors online right oh, now. Wow. Hello. Yes. That's awesome. the highest <coughs> number I think I've ever. I'll come up for ah, now. Okay, so Crispin Little's written in that. Measure that, thank you. The Ocidax themselves degrade whale bone. So the fraying we are seeing here on the vertebral processes could be done only by Ocidax. Mm -hmm. oh. Hey, pilots, could we get a power cycle on the TO, please? Sure. Thanks. Right, so they are actually consuming the bone and breaking it down, and it's fraying Power's and <laughs> becoming thinner and weaker as wow. it's being consumed. All right, power cycle. Thank you. Sure. So, 
So you guys found this at 3,200 meters water depth in a transect between two waypoints, right? This was a completely oh, by chance find. By chance find. Correct. Well, except it was seen on sonar and um, Rennie moved us toward it. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Yep. Great. He'd seen this object on the sonar. Okay, yeah. so again, just let's see this bone right in front of us here. I think that's definitely, we want to come back yeah, and try yeah, and pick that yeah, one up. Absolutely. Got a lot of nice um, worm coverage and it looks free. It looks easy to collect, which looks really nice. So these Good little eye, bones Jennifer. look like finger bones. Which ones? Down there? The oh, the loose ones. Yep. The langees. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is what Chad was talking about earlier, how the ones on the lower end are really smooth and then the upper vertebrates right. are really, really right. jagged. But of course, according to Chris, he really thinks that that's just evidence of the degradation of the bone by Osidax. Oh, wow. 916 on YouTube. What is that white thing? Ah, down there. Yeah. I know. It looks fleshy. It's Ew. like the edge of the scapula. Okay. Oh, uh, we were looking at something and I think oh, else that the just other passed side? by. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, now uh -huh. there, yes. So now is that the big tubes that the right, Chris was saying, saying it's associated with the arteries? Uh -huh. Wow. The aorta. That is neat. Right, and if you've ever gone to a display of a blue whale heart, you know, children can go through the chambers of a blue yeah, whale heart. Right. It's the size of a, a small car. So um, these, it's really magnificent, the size of these animals. So this is a, r a relatively small whale. Yes. Yes. Is it is it possible that it's just a young whale? Yes. No. No. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Danny. So back row, and we're going to do a image just to do a mosaic. Okay. Um, and then, you still here? Where is he? Let me oh. have the and cores, right? And we. Yeah, I have. A yeah. Couple more cores. Yeah. So once we're done with all the photography, mm -hmm. to reconstruct this, then we'll uh, ha we have some targets for bone collections and for sediment samples. Yep. Wow! Look at that giant anthropod. Whoa! No, that's. That, that looks like a squat that's a, lobster. That is. That's yeah, a but he's huge. Yeah. yeah. Can we pan? Can we pan right really quickly just to see that large squat lobster? Um, <laughs> Everyone's really busy. They're otherwise occupied. Mike, can we pan right? We're kind of doing some photographs. Oh, you're now. in the. Okay, never just, mind. Just doing a lap around. Okay. Take a minute. Nope. So it might still be there. We'll yeah. Back. He was ginormous. So let's um while we're doing this keep our eyes out. We've identified some bones yep. that we want to pick up. Yep. Let's try and find a site that we want to do those other push cores. So we did the first push cores here. Should yep. we do the other ones at the tail end or the yep. other side of the head? Well, it seems like there's a lot more worms around the head. Yep. So I will ask Crispin if he would, if he has a recommendation. Okay. Okay. So we have a question out there. They want to know if we're going to extend this cruise so that we can, or the, um, <laughs> This dive. this dive so that we can also get to the cone that we wanted to see. <laughs> um, and I will remind everybody that we, our plan was for about a 32 hour dive. We are currently in hour 20, if I'm correct. And so, um, but a lot of this is determined on the weather. Um, a lot of the forecasts are for a rather large swell to be coming our way. Um, we can operate this vessel uh, with the ROVs in the water um, to a pretty significant degree, if I remember correctly, six to nine meters is about the limit of the swell size. So um, I don't know if we can get an answer from science. Um, is there any talk of extending this as long as the conditions hold? I think um, the goal is to try to be on deck by the end of UC uh, of the day. Uh -huh. So um, I guess the end of the PCT time day. Unfortunately, we're not likely going to be able to extend the dive yeah. because of weather. 
Has anybody picked up on the irony of the season? No. It's the what fall. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> do, I, do I win? Thank you. Bing, you bing, bing, do. Bing. What is my prize? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> What is my prize? Great science is happening. Do you need more prize than that? Here, you can hold Inky for a little bit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Inky is our mascot up here. It's a stuffed octopus about the size of our moose octopus friends. And Inky's been bringing us great luck. Pilots, can we have a, a power cycle if that's possible during the photo mosaic, please? Yeah, sure. Oh, um, you know what? Uh, Never mind. It, it's just updated. So if you didn't do anything, don't worry about it. All right. Thanks. Somebody's asking if there um, are snailfish. I did not see any. Um, I think, what are we seeing? The um, grenadiers and... Oh, um... Yeah, uh, Cuskiels? Cuskiels, yeah. No, not Cuskiels. No, eel pouts. Eel pouts. Eel pouts. Eel pouts. Oh, so no Cuskiels? Yeah, eel pouts. We've ruled those out? Okay, so it's eel pouts. I have yet to see a Cuskiel. Okay, and no, no uh, snailfish. Chin barbels. He wants one over the top. Do we have an eel pout species? Okay. Actually, you know what? I would like that power cycle if you can. Roger. Thanks. <laughs> All right, power back on. Thank you. So, uh, bones next, or? Uh, oh, actually, are we done the photo mosaic? Can we pan right? No, we're not oh, done. We're with not it. done with the photo oh. mosaic. Yeah, we're gonna go it. and look at that ginormous squat lobster. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll relax. <laughs> yeah, good. I'm glad Crispin's paying attention. All right, so I've been out for a while. I know you were talking about squat lobsters. I remember seeing a a crab. Uh, up near the heart, I believe it was. Are there any other um, arthropods that we've identified? I think we saw amphipods. Some amphipods, awesome. Yep. Really interesting video footage. So our bubble. second set of push cores are going to be in the, cool. again in the head region, but on the opposite side. Okay. One close, mm -hmm. one far. Yep. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you you notice that there's a uh, a lot less of that kind of worm mats in the tail end, and so there's just more food that was coming off of the head and probably infiltrating the sediments. So we're going to target that area. More bone. Nice job, look good. Well, the uh, fluke itself doesn't have any bone in it. Okay. So okay, science, what were you missing. asking for a minute ago? So um, we want to return to the head of the whale, um, the side opposite where we took the first two push cores. Um, while we're headed that way, there was a really large squat lobster up in that area, so we wanted to get a chance to take a look at that just for fun. Okay. Hey gang, shout out to my wife, Jenny. She works for the Santa Barbara County Fire Department. They are all watching right now. Ooh. Hello. I'm um, Jen, whatever core they put, you can just put the number there. Okay, great, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. A lot of them very grateful for being first responders. Maybe we you guys can use this them. as a training exercise. We are the first responders on this whale fall <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There oh, it is. Look at that. that chunky chunk troller. Do you see it up there? He's got a buddy now. Sweet next to that fish. Can we get the lasers in on this, please? Yep. I think that definitely is the largest squat lobster I've seen. It's like the king lock. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, Perhaps a different amazing. species. That guy is four inches across. Wow. I wonder what, what their growth rate is. Wow. That's Look humongous. At that. that thing's been eating a lot of food. Yeah. <laughs> Zoom in there, video. Yeah, he just stumbled off that whale carcass a few hours ago. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh. 
That's amazing. <laughs> sea pigs on the fast. ground around no. him. Oh, man. Wow. I want to see him that. swim. Can we try? <laughs> I think I heard he can't. <laughs> he yeah. probably can't swim. Doesn't swim He's too full of whale. <laughs> it's going to be a couple months before he goes anywhere. And, uh, Could be a female, too. A yeah. sea pig. I don't know how to, yeah. uh, how to determine male female for squat lobster. Wow. And they have these really neat eyes. See, they're kind of like a orangish yeah. yellow. Yeah. On a little stalk. Wow. So, yeah, let's get a shot with the lasers like that, and then let's turn the lasers off. I can get your lasers when you want there, Mike. Yeah. I think that's, them. there we go. Whoop. Okay. All right, turn off. And just for clarification, um, we call them squat lobsters, however they are, in fact. Galatheid crabs. Yes, yeah. thank you. Wow. And just circling back on a, another part of the conversation, Crispin <laughs> Little said he's never seen a natural <laughs> whale fall with remains of a fluke. Oh, okay. Wow. So I wonder if that just that gets removed very quickly. Yeah, yeah huh. that's great. Thank sure. you. Or if that in itself was a fluke. Mm. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. and I forgot yes. my dad right. had. So now if we can get set up for two push cores. Wow. Sure. Sea pig wide, please, video. So maybe it would make sense to do the far and then do the near. Yep. That would make more sense. <laughs> <laughs> now that we know yes. what we want to do. Yep. Little squat lobster dwarfs the whale. <laughs> I hear. Th and I hear that Shannon around Johnson the head, but on this side. That's correct. Okay. Opposite okay. side from where we did it last time. Yeah. So we were kind of at the lower jaw. Yeah. So I hear that Shannon Johnson from Ambari is listening. She was involved in a lot of whale fall re experiments in Monterey Bay in the 90s and early 2000s. Welcome. <laughs> You want to change that back? Then, and uh, and how does this one look, Shannon? Actually, maybe I can Is get Is this well. a good-looking whale fall? No worries. Yeah, if, if she wants to add to uh, what we know through the chat, that would be great. Yeah, has she seen octopuses associated with these whale falls before? That was a question that we're still... Yep. Okay. Shannon's my old lab mate from uh, Moss Landing Marine Labs, and she's very happy about the octopus on top of a whale fall. Has okay. she seen that before? Has she mentioned that? Uh, she didn't mention it, but I think by her excitement, probably not very often, okay. if at all. Okay, great. Well, guys, how's this for distance? You can see in the Argus view. That's about where yeah, we were good. before. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to maybe get a little more? <laughs> a little more down toward the tail? I uh, know, like just maybe more oriented so we're like. Perpendicular? perpendicular yeah, yeah. So perpendicular. scoot around to the right a bit. Just so, like, the. Maybe the predator arm is kind of in line with where the head meets the the neck. Yeah, like the so. whales have necks. Well, they, I think they have where the neck would be. Yeah. <laughs> Happy here. Yeah. 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 That looks that looks good. Thank you. Mike, what is our current depth? Three two three nine. Three thousand. 239 meters beneath the sea is where we are. Uh, somebody asked if um, there have been um, multiple whales found in a fall. Ooh. Jennifer, do you have? I haven't heard of that. Mm -hmm. um, you do see some, some whales travel in small groups um, and in Monterey Bay area where we have a lot of whales, baleen whales that come in during the summer to feed on krill, we do see the, um, like say humpbacks, sometimes foraging oh, yeah. in small groups. Um, and then when the gray whales are going up and down the coast, you see say an adult female and a calf when they're traveling after they've given birth um, down in uh, Mexico, traveling north, oh. but you don't see, um, I haven't heard of any whale falls being seen where there's more than one. Right. I imagine if it is the case, you wouldn't necessarily know because the ROV um, observational area is really only, it's limited by its lighting. And so if you had two whales falling about two miles from the surface to the bottom of the ocean, they're not necessarily going to fall straight down. They might have a little drift. So even if they were near each other, you, you wouldn't necessarily have the opportunity to notice unless you explored kind of a larger area around the whale. Yeah, I would imagine with their... Um, fins and flukes as well and 
their orientation as they sort of spiral down that they would head off on different trajectories. Um, so it'd probably be a pretty big area. So our science team is collecting just tons of data. A big shout out to Magda. She's our data logger and um, she is probably, her fingers are probably red hot right now as <laughs> she's trying to over. capture all of this. Taking, yeah, images. Just flying over the images. keys. <laughs> Mount Madonna School of Oceanography class wants to know about when this whale would have died and how. Um, and that would be purely speculation on our part now, but one of the things that we are doing is collecting all of these samples. Um, and we've been very busy because we have um, scientists um, that are interested in samples of this whale fall to determine things like that. What might be the cause? So the further um, one out is going to be core four. When it might have died okay. um, and lots of things like that. So that was a great question. So one of the uh, science community out in the listening world um, thought that from the amount of tissue left on the skeleton that it was probably about four months ago that this whale died. And circling back on uh, what we were just discussing, whether or not we've ever seen multiple whales in one fall, Crispin Little has noted that there is a deposit on the coast of Peru in the Pisco Formation where there are multiple whale fossils in a very small area. <laughs> cool. Dun, dun, dun. The more you know. <laughs> thank you for that. Yeah, thank you for mm -hmm. helping us answer some of these questions. I love the Science of Shore chat room. It really <laughs> expands. Yep, it, yeah, it's really, it makes it, uh, we're getting a lot of input on which bones to collect. Now, are these scientists scientists that have been on Nautilus, or how do they, how do they identify as scientists ashore? I think a lot of times the scientists who are interested in the expedition that sign up to be scientists ashore, so they are able to log into the science chat. Is there anyone can do that? Sorry, sorry to interrupt yeah. the chatter. Um, yep. Want me to aim for any of these little worm-like features as well, or does it matter? Uh, why not? Might as well get one. Sure. Yeah. Better to have it, and not need it, than need it, not have it. I always say. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. Uh, video, you want to go ahead and zoom there real quick. Is there anything? Oh, yeah, I'll go for that worm-looking thing. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Sounds good. Thanks, Jess. Yeah. yeah you so want to come a little wider, right. video? What we're trying to do is That's take these good. cores. One thing they can do with them is try and understand the kind of the zone of influence that the decaying material of this whale is having on the surrounding sediments and communities. Steady now. Steady. <laughs> There we go. Nice Bullseye. And I don't know if people mm. appreciate so thick. the challenge yeah. that yeah. Jess is experiencing right now. Is the ROV on the bottom? Yes. Yeah, yeah okay. Perfect. Well, that makes it a little easier, I guess. Yeah, we're a little negative, and we can push in there. But what did you guys say? You can only put about 150 pounds of force before the ROV gets lifted up? Well, I, less than that when we're uh, at the way that we run, but um, yeah, like it, if we have to lift something down uh, for equipment to the bottom, that's about the maximum that we can do. But even now we're ballasted so that the vehicle is like nice and to fly. So it's, we can push with like le much less than that. Okay. It's yeah, not very much. When it's in the water, it doesn't, that looks good, ideally Jess. it doesn't weigh anything, right? Right. Yep. Do you guys want any more on this? I that's pretty, yeah, that's pretty full. That's pretty full. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, coming up. Stand by. Okay, so fall is situated. Come on. Nice. Nice. Can you come full wide there, video, please. Oh, tonight, yes. And push core four. Yes, thank you. All right, go ahead, Meg, thank you. 
that one was the further out one. If you're watching yep. on the quad cam, I believe you can see the arm coming around to the load the sample on to Hercules. Sorry, I want to make myself a little bit better angle here. Argus can view. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of like that's what you're thinking. Um, back here. A little louder, guys. Gen, yeah. Back here in the science row, we can see who's in the science chat room, and we can talk to them through messaging. Um, what we can't see is what's coming into Scott at the Science Communication Fellow um, Chair, and those are ev that's everything that's written in through the Nautilus Live website. So um, it's easier for us to um, interact with scientists through the science chat if they're if they've signed up to be a scientist ashore. Um, hi. Yeah, and it is just blowing up here. I mean, <laughs> questions are coming in just at a barrage. Um, um, I'm just getting hammered. Yeah. So trying to get to them as many as possible without interrupting the diving and the science that's going on. Um, I would like to get a Nautilus Live Nation round of applause to Jess for her surgical skill <laughs> in collecting that core sample. You're also getting kudos from uh, our scientists nice ashore. Job. Nice core, good job. Teamwork, guys. Round All of right. applause in the control van. One more to go. Go Jess, go Jess. <laughs> it's all teamwork. All right, do you want me to take out this last one and then uh, move closer to the the whale? Yep, That's right. right. We're going to try and get up. now um, close. up close to the whale in that area where we see a lot of the worms and the sediments. Okay. Is it going to be easier to maneuver with the core in the holster or out? Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll take it now, seeing okay. as we're here. Hey, Aaron, Annie. That was sample 029. Yep, copy that. Thank you. Okay. Annie, are you there? Jennifer? I'm here. Oh. Yeah. Uh, some um, fifth graders yes. from St. Mary's <laughs> School in Gilroy would like to know what type of sample we just collected. Oh, so the sample we just collected is called a push core. It's a sediment sample. And you'll uh, be able to see on the, <coughs> on the view that we're going to be removing one more push core from this set of five. Uh, it'll be empty. And it's a um, see-through tube. Dane, you said what it was made it's of last year. butyrate. Plastic. Butyrate plastic. And it's it's uh, it's got that circular knob on the top so that the ROV's uh, manipulator arm can grab it. Um, it's one end of the tube is, is, is plugged. The other is open. We're going to push that open end into these soft sediments, and they'll fill it up. And then just like you can put your thumb over the top of a straw and keep the water inside, having one end plugged helps keep the sediments inside. Um, in the layers in which they were deposited um, originally. So the top part of the core will have the most recently laid down sediments. The bottom will have the oldest that we were able to grab. And um, then they'll be frozen for later analysis. In this case, what we're really one of the things we're interested in is what kind of um, organisms and um, chemicals are in the sediments that have been in, and that have been influenced by this whale fall. 
So it's specifically these cores we're taking to look at how the decaying material of this whale are influencing the sediments in the associated communities, both at the surface and inside. So the in cool. fauna that lives within the sediments. And this, this sediment's pretty ideal for taking cores because it's consolidated. Even though it's hard to get a full core because of the pressure that the ROV has to push on the core top in order to push it into the sediment. Sometimes when you have really loose, unconsolidated sediment with a lot of pore fluid, which is the fluid that exists in between the spaces of sediment, when you lift up the core, you can lose your entire sediment. So you, it's, it's really hard to get a sample down yeah, core. Loose, loose mud is impossible to collect with a core. You have to use a, a grab. Other measurement yep. sampling techniques. Pete, which school that was uh, from Gilroy? That was St. Mary. Hey guys, this is uh, Chad Noah's dad. How you guys doing? <laughs> Talked to you yesterday. So yeah, like uh, I was talking about in that interaction yesterday, sometimes you're looking for one thing and you find something completely different and completely exciting and that's what we've done today. We found this uh, whale that died some time at the surface and sank down to the bottom and is now a a bountiful feast for hundreds of organisms down here. So we're cruising around getting uh, lots of pictures and lots of samples for other scientists and ourselves. So it was a real exciting day and I'm glad you guys are able to join along. We had some people who've written in Chad to us asking if we were gonna see a whale fall. And of course we said, well, we'd love to, but we have no idea if we'll encounter one. So we're pretty yeah. excited. The two things we were asked about, whale falls and sunken ships. So at least we could um, <laughs> we could deliver on one of them. No you never know, though. Buried treasure, but I think this is like a cool treasure. Well, I think yeah, I, I think all the animals that are living in these sediments think there's buried treasure. I know that some of the uh, people who work here have seen whale falls before, mm -hmm. but uh, who hasn't in this room? Because I haven't. I haven't encountered a whale no, fall. No, I haven't. I, I haven't. haven't. No. Yeah. So looks like the science row hasn't, which is. Uh, to be expected. <laughs> we don't go out as often as Well, you as know what's interesting? Does. Two years ago in Channel Islands, we encountered um, a whale skeleton, but it was pretty clean. It wasn't nearly as active, so it was much older and had kind of already gone through this process, a lot of this process anyway, of decomposition and um, scavenging. Might need you on a little hair further. Yeah, I've sure. been uh, running up and down stairs. Uh, mm -hmm. corresponding with other scientists who specialize in research on whale falls, specifically things like the bone-eating worms, Ocidax, that we see there, the red-colored worm. Uh, so they're, they have many requests on trying to balance that out up and down, arranging when they can come right. and pick all up right. frozen samples and Should be more all sorts of fun so stuff. So right in that kind of nook between the the bone going off to the left and the right, there's a lot of dense worms. That looks like a good spot. This one over here, the very red one? I think they mean there. I was thinking the right. brown one's more in front. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. Similar to the sample that we took on the other side. Sure thing. While we're taking this, uh, uh, scientist ashore Crispin Little writes in wondering how many whale falls Nautilus has encountered over the years. He's seen at least three on Science Chat over the past three years. Any? Uh, do you guys want to zoom in there before I take the oh sample? Oh, yeah, that's great. Yes. Okay, go ahead and zoom. That's good. Thank you. Sure. This would be an interesting one. Yeah. You want to come a little wide there, video? That's great there, Ashley. Thank you. It was pretty perpendicular. I think a little bit more like this. I'm sorry. This is the this is a good distance for you guys, correct? Yeah, that yeah this good. is great. Thank you. Okay. Made an assumption without asking. Good assumption. Just 
Chad, are you still on? Uh, he doesn't have a headset on. Oh, okay. Um, Jennifer, Wait, we're getting... Off again. Um, They're talking. Just got a whole bunch of questions about, again, about what species of whale this is. So we... That looks really good, Jess. Yeah, and uh, Chrisman said this was a gr great spot. So we are right on target with a really good core here. Yeah, that's a good one. And um, as far as what species of whale it is, um, right. I, I would say okay. we've determined that for certain. Um, it's definitely a baleen whale. You can see the baleen um, on the left side of your screen, which is the kind of fibrous projections that these animals use to filter the water and capture their prey like krill and small animals. What? Nice. What? Nice. Ah, cool. Wow, those uh, those okay. worms really stick up a long ways, don't they? Yeah, yeah. deceiving it's little worms. <laughs> yeah, it's deceiving. a heck. Yep. Watch. Yeah. Okay. So it's possible that you it... all your yaw, right? You can yaw right to make more space. Yeah. There we go. Or left. Right, so the worm that we're seeing here is not the Ossidax yeah, yeah. bone-eating worm that we were talking about. This is another polychaete worm. You can see it's living in tubes, and it is in these areas of sediments right up next to the skeleton. And um, so the decaying whale appears to be influencing the amount of food that's available in the surrounding sediments. And these worms are taking advantage of that. And we have some scientists who are eager to study these worms in addition to others who are wanting to study the bone eating worms. See that giant squat lobster in the background? Right, our buddy is still there. He had a big meal and is just chilling out. So those non-bone-eating polychaetes, um, what feeding mode do they have? Uh, I mean, they're tube builders, right? So is their head end out? I don't know. I'll have to look it up, or we'll see if maybe someone writes yeah, in to answer yeah. that question. Yeah, I mean, why, why would there be... Unless they were a filter feeder, it's this is an interesting situation. What are they doing there? I might suppose that there's a lot of biological material from the whale sort of Could be drifting around in the water. Mm -hmm. Oop. As uh, we move on to find some bones that have the bone-eating worms on it, we've heard, uh, Chad has heard from uh, Shannon Johnson that sometimes there are bone-eating snails. And uh, so keep your eye out for some bone-eating snails as we're looking more closely at this skeleton. What an amazing find in preparation for Halloween, yes? Mm -hmm. This is great. Looks like it's tilted back. Yeah. It's all right anyway, it's going in. Mm -mm. And remind me, Jennifer, didn't you say that um, it was estimated that uh, this whale has been here for about four months. Yeah, um, one of our correctly? Yeah. scientists ashore estimated that. Yeah. Based on the amount of tissue right remaining on the whale. Tap here. So um, we have some information on the, these worms that are that were in our collection there, and um, they could be right. key top. Okay. Very the worms cool. have their Great head job, ends Tim. projecting out of the tubes. They will be filter filter feeding the organic material that is being thrown around by the scavengers. Wow. All right. So that was our last available push core. That was uh, sample 030. Is that correct? Yes, that was sample All right. 030. Great. So I think now we want to move on to trying to collect some bones with um, the Ossidax on them. Oh I didn't my gosh. See very 